this tutorial, we're going to make an effect like this, something like a single atom with a nucleus and an orbiting electron. This is highly stylized, not realistic, but I think it demonstrates some interesting techniques that I guess you could use with a moon going around a planet or something like that too. So it's pretty simple. Um, we just have a control null here, which is um, sort of the parent for all of these things. So we can move it around the scene. We have an electron and electron trail. So those are the orange bits that are going around. And you'll notice that they have a common um, path. So each one of these things is just made out of a single ellipse. And when we're using trim paths uh, and trim path offset to make both the um, electron itself and then the trail going behind it. So I say they share a common pathway or an ellipse here. It's actually just duplicated. So if I change one, I'd have to duplicate it, change the other. And then the nucleus itself is in its own composition just because it has just a, a simple ellipse with a couple of effects on it to make this sort of moiling, uh, roiling kind of internal structure, just using a cell pattern and saturation. But this uh, isn't really about that. We can look at that quickly, but what I'm more interested in is making the orbiting electron. So let's try to recreate this here. I'll just turn the originals off in case I need to refer to them. And with nothing selected, we'll create a new ellipse. I'm just going to drag it out so it's sort of centered around our um, nucleus here. And I've got no fill and I've got kind of a thick stroke. I'm going to move this up a little bit. This is the really tricky part about all of this, and let me just hide this again. If we play the original, that this same object is sometimes in front and sometimes behind the nucleus. And there may be other ways to do this, but I just did it with some selective masking here. So we'll take a look at that when we rebuild it. Oops. Okay, so we just have a stroked ellipse. And so you could create an ellipse itself to represent the electron and animate it going around in a similar sort of circle. But the approach that I'm taking is actually using the stroke that is associated with this path and animating the stroke itself using trim paths. So let's name this electron demo and contents will add a trim paths. And if we open this up, it's a handy thing we just reduce the value of the end point. So, you know, we've got the start and end, and we want quite a low value, so 0 0.025. No, sorry, 0 0.25. Um, now it's quite thin, so it doesn't look like a circle yet, but if we go into the ellipse under stroke, and the line cap is by default set to butt cap, we will change it to round cap, and we get sort of a circular shape here. And now what we want to do is just animate this offset value so we can make it look like it's going around. I'm just going to do this very simply with two keyframes that will loop. And I'll just do a linear um, transition between them. So let's make sure. Let's do a one second loop so it goes all the way around. I'm going to go to negative one so it goes in the direction that I want. Okay, so it's going around at a constant speed. Now you could add more keyframes if you wanted to sort of speed up as it goes around the bend here, uh, but I'll leave that to you in case you want to try that. But for me, I'm not going to bother um, easy easing these because I just want this linear change so it loops perfectly but I do want to loop it so I'll hold down option or alt uh, and click on the stopwatch to open up the expression editor here and we'll just type uh, something that will loop in and loop out in case we move it along the timeline so loop capital I N open bracket close bracket plus loop 
out open bracket close bracket minus value so this will just um, loop the keyframes that we have i don't really need the loop in because my keys start at the beginning a loop in including that if i move these over for some reason then it will loop before the first keyframe too so that's the reason we're doing that so we can just move it over here right so pretty easy um, now how do we get it to go behind sometimes well there are different ways you could approach this i guess you could duplicate it and you can mask it and you could do things you can use set map but it doesn't really work what i found was the easiest is simply to draw a mask so select your shape tool with this layer selected but now we have to change it to mask a drawing and i'll kind of zoom in here and start right in the middle of our uh nucleus hold down shift and start dragging it out now if i hold shift and at least on the mac command okay i wasn't quite in the center as you can see but i'm just trying to get it to match the shape of the nucleus because i'm going to use this to hide the electron uh, when it goes behind so something like that now by default it's set to add so we're only going to see it when it's in front let me turn off that crazy movement on our null here I just have a wiggle on the null actually so that's going to move things around for us a little bit but if we go back to our mask just move this back into place so as i was saying the mask is an add mask which is not what we want we want it to be a subtraction mask so we can change that here now we only see it outside of the mask and we do want to see it when it's in front of the nucleus. So we're just going to change our mask shape a little bit. So nothing too difficult here. So we'll just move this point. That might even be enough. Yeah, so that actually works. So if I needed to, I could, you know, move these points up a little bit. I'm just trying to make it match at the top. So. I was sort of careful when I was creating my path going around here that it was seemingly tilted towards us if we think of it as perspective rather than just the shape of the ellipse. So the mask could allow it to be visible here. But then when it goes into the back or the top part of its ellipse, then it's hidden by this mask. So that's all, really all there is to it. Um, and I can just duplicate this now to make the trail. So I'll duplicate this layer and let's call this electron trail. And we just have to change some of the settings. So the stroke is too big. Let's change this to a much smaller value. And we also want to change the start or the length of the trim paths. So if we just scroll down here, and so our endpoint is 0.2. So if we increase this, we just have a trail. And we still have the same, um, we still have the same expression on the offset. So it's just looping this rotation and it's following along like this. And you can see that there's no taper on this at all. By default, I think under trim paths, taper here somewhere I'm almost positive um, stroke I oh, sorry it's under stroke so we can open this up and it's a little confusing start with what do we set that to 100 Ah, okay, no. 
So the end length we set to 100%. That's the only thing we have to change. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, but to taper it down to the end, I'm just increasing end length to 100%. We can change the ease so it kind of is chubbier until we get closer to the end. I might even experiment with making the stroke width a bit higher. Yeah, something like that. And because we just duplicated this layer, it has the same mask on it, so it's masked nicely. And the only other thing we're going to do really is to parent our two new layers to the control null. And so that just allows us to grab it to move it around the scene. I guess I have a keyframe on position. Let's turn that off. Right, so we can just move it around the scene. We can rotate it and it will still work. And that's really all there is to it. The way I had it shaking around before it was on the position of the control null. I clicked, alt clicked on the stopwatch and just added a wiggle expression so wiggle I think it's uh, amplitude then frequency although I may be wrong um, so let's say it's allowed to move 30 pixels three times a frame I may have this backwards actually uh, it looks like it's moving three pixels 30 times a frame so I've got that backwards so it's the frequency first and then the amount, the amplitude of the wiggle after. Yeah, so that's just moving three times a frame now, and it's moving 30 pixels randomly around. And just if you're interested, the only thing I did for the, uh, the nucleus here, if we go into this composition and turn off the effects, you'll see that it's just an ellipse, so just a circle. And then I added two layer styles, or one, I can't remember anymore. Um, inner shadow and inner glow. So let's take a look at what inner shadow is doing. So it's adding a little bit of a core shadow over here. It's kind of hard to see, but if I go in just so you know to create a layer style we just go to layer um just select the layer 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 styles and it's got things like drop shadow inner shadow outer glow inner glow and this is really useful to add some essentially effects to a layer in a different way than doing it either with um sort of sub shapes in the shape layer or using other effects so I used inner shadow here, and if I just change the, if I change this to multiply, you can kind of see what's going on, maybe a little more clearly. Oh, this is actually something else I did, although I've messed it up now since I changed things around, but you can change the angle of this. I can't because I've got it linked to something, but this changes the angle that the light is coming from essentially, so or where the shadow would be. But what I did here was I wanted to link it to the rotation of that null. So I grabbed this composition and dragged it over here. And I just did that so I can have two compositions open at the same time. And I went to the nulls rotation. And I think I've kind of messed this up, but essentially what I did was um, Alt click on angle of the inner shadow and then use the pick whip to go to the rotation of the control null. 
So the idea was that I wanted it to always maintain a constant position no matter what happened with the rotation, although I can see that I've kind of messed it up now. I've been playing around with it a lot, but um, if we take a look at the expression, you can see this a little... So it was just linked to the rotation of the null and then minus 45 degrees to put it in the position that I wanted it. Although I can see now it's not working. So um, let's just try and recreate that. I may just, so I want it to be in this position. So it's minus 56 and the rotation Oh, actually, the reason that it, I don't need to do that is because I have it in its own composition now. But this is actually not a bad thing to show that if you want to link attributes between layers on different compositions, you can do that. You just have to open them up together this way so you have access to the pick whip in one composition and you can link it over to the other one. So uh, I've got that inner shadow and then I just added an inner glow just to sort of soften up the edges to make it look a little more 3D. Um, you can play around with that. And then in terms of effects, I just have this cell pattern and you can really hardly see it right now. Uh, but if I turn off the hue and saturation and change these values a little bit, I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So I just reduce the size and turn the contrast back up. So this is what the cell pattern looks like. It's just these kind of moving cells. And they're moving because I've got a keyframe on evolution. So this just runs them through. Actually, I've got an expression just linking it to time uh, times 100. And then to just make it a little more vague, I really reduce the contrast. And increase the size so we just feels like there's a little bit of movement in there and then I turned on some hue and saturation just to colorize it this sort of blue color and then if we go back into this composition so you can see that it just moving around sort of subtly inside it's gonna fix that I think it's the Contrast is still too high. I think I had it down to something like 17. Yeah, just so we see a little bit of movement here. And that's really all there is to it. So um, just using uh, a circle or an ellipse and trim paths to make something like this and just some uh, creative masking uh, to make this work. Now, if you had to make this sort of revolve in different directions or change its path around, then it might get a little trickier and you might have to use something other than this ellipse method, but this works pretty well for what we need to do. Okay, good luck. Thanks.